Good morning, everybody. It is uh, April 8th, Friday. Um, just going on 10 a.m. I managed to get some stuff done, got the boys fed, took them for a walk before it got to be unbelievably hot. Um, it's supposed to be a, a, probably 100 uh, today. And over the next couple of days, it's supposed to dramatically drop like into the 60s, which I can't wait for. It's just heat and I do not get along very well. Um, but I'm getting a bunch of work done. Uh, I've been having a, really a good time going over, uh, spending my afternoons uh, working on Lyle Lovett's music. And this tour is going to be a ball because the band is like... Lyle's so great, and the large band is always like an amazing collection. It's kind of like doing the show in Vegas. Um, you've got probably 15 musicians on stage that are at the top of their game just kicking butt. So it's going to be fun. So I've been working on that. Uh, his new album is... I didn't play on the new album, but I'm, I'm learning it for the show, and uh, it's great. It's really good. He's such an amazing writer. Uh, let's see what else. Um... Oh, God. I was thinking of something this morning, but I'm not thinking of it now, so I guess I'll skip it. Um, okay, musically today, I thought I would go to Sweden. Um, I did an album back in 2010 with a Swedish artist named Pai Bachman. And uh, it's I'm not sure what the title of this album actually means. It's the, the number P, the, uh, I mean the letter P, the number 2, number zero, and then Y-I-O, so P-2-O-Y-I-O. -O. Um, it uh, was her ninth album, and uh, she's been a, a force in Swedish music for a very long time. Um, she uh, she began, I mean, it's weird, she be began her career, we're almost, uh, I'm a little older than her, but she began her career at nine years old, and... Uh, uh, made her TV debut, I think, in 1957. Now, I was reading through her um, Wikipedia, and um, really interesting life. It's just, I would talk about it, but you couldn't pronounce half of the things in it, so it would be easier if you want to check her out to go back and take a look at it. Um, but she's been a very successful songwriter uh, for her own material and also for other people. Um, had songs in the Eurovision contest. I think she's the only artist who's had songs in that for five uh, different shows uh, over the years. Um, we recorded this album at Castle Oak Studio, which is um, in L.A. here. Did Bronson Arroyo's record there, uh, the pit picture for the Pittsburgh Pirates, um, all kinds of uh, interesting projects. Steve Sykes uh, engineered it, and Mick... Um, uh, how was it? Wenborn, I believe was his last name. Mick Wenborn um, played guitar on it along with Tommy Denander, and but Mick produced this album, and and it's myself on bass and uh, John uh, J R Robinson on uh, drums and David Garfield on keyboards with Pi is uh, singing lead on everything, and then the background on this is Pi uh, spells her name P Y. Um, Patrick Tibble and Teresa uh, Bjarnaby. Uh, it was mastered by Bernie Grunman, like so much of the stuff in L.A. It was like Bernie or uh, Doug Sachs. There was like a small group of guys that, that did most all of the engineering here in town. But um, real interesting stuff. I, I so always appreciate when I get to work on projects with artists from other countries. Um, you just get to hear what you're used to, but with little little tweaks in it because of uh, just the way they've interpreted it, uh, be it Japanese artist, Argentinian, French, German, Italian, uh, Chinese. Uh, it's great when you do pop music with people from all of those different countries, and it all each one has its own little nuance. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and play a couple of tunes from this Pi Bachman um, album that we did. This one, uh, and my pronunciations are complete shit when it comes to this, but this is uh, Jag Varfel, J-A-G-V-A-R-F-E-L is the title of this track. So here we go. Let's take a listen. Mm -hmm. 
JR is also doing percussion on this.
Interesting. While I'm listening, I was looking at the album cover, and it's P2OYIO. Well, I suddenly realized it, it, the P and the Y are pi, and the 2010 is 2010, which is when we did the album. But it's P20Y10. <laughs> It's amazing. Sometimes you're, you're staring at something. It's so obvious, but you're going, I wonder what that means. So, uh, so that's, a, that's, that's what that is. Okay. At least it explained it in, in my uh, limited mental capacity here. Um, I've always loved working in Sweden. It's, it's such an exquisite country. And uh, I remember the last time, uh, well, not the last, the last time I was there was with Phil Collins, I believe. Um, but um, when I was here with Judith Owen, we, uh, we had just a fabulous day there. We went to the ABBA Museum, which is really a trip. Uh, I mean, there's this one massive room filled with all their costumes, and there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, their entire history is there, and there's big cutouts where you can stick your head through a thing and look like you're in ABBA with them. But the coolest thing was we were driving around, and there was a... Uh, uh, we got in a taxi cab and asked the guy, you know, what's a cool thing to see here? Um, and he said, well, you know, down the street's the ABBA Museum, but if you really want to see something amazing. And he pulled up to the Vasa Museum. Now, the Vasa was the biggest wooden ship ever built. Um, it's, I don't know, from 400 years ago or something like that. Um, but there's this massive building and apparently the, the the vasa was this you know gigantic warship but the uh the king wanted it to be even more amazing than anything that had ever been built so he had them add an extra level uh to the ship of of uh gun ports on it and apparently on its maiden voyage as it sailed out of the harbor in Stockholm, uh, and it says a slight breeze came up and tipped the ship sideways, and the gun ports were so low that it flooded the ship and it sank in the entrance to the harbor, and it laid down there for, I don't know what they said, 300 years or something like that, uh, down in the, uh, in the muck and mire at the bottom of the harbor. And a lot of lot of people died on this ship, and uh, it was just one of these unbelievable catastrophes. So the thing never really got past the entrance to the harbor. But they, uh, I don't know when they did the uh, when they raised it exactly, uh, but when they they were able to raise it and uh, and restore it, uh, which didn't require a lot apparently, because where it was in the harbors were like all of the sewage from the city and everything settled there and it basically uh, excuse me ended up preserving this ship so um you walk in not knowing quite what to expect i mean for anybody that's been there you know what i'm talking about and for people who live there they probably just go yeah the vasa but as a neophyte walking in the door judith and i walk in and you're looking and you looking and then you start looking up and up and it is so unbelievably huge, and I forget how many like millions of oak trees that were felled to, to make this thing. Um, all of the the, uh, the carvings and everything in it are just unbelievable. And this museum is like un really amazing. Uh, they have you know details of of all kinds of things that were reproduced about the ship, but they also have. They had forensic people come in, and there's like all these skeletons laid out in there of all the people, you know, so many of the people who died, you know, that were down in that ship. And they had these forensic people come in and do wax figures based on the skeletons. And so you're looking at all these these people in, in you know, dressed in the costume of the time of the sailors. Um, it's a remarkable thing. If you get to Stockholm, I, I, I absolutely, it's VA, the V-A-S-A, the Vasa. I highly recommend seeing this. It's a, one of these things. I've got tons of pictures I took there of it. And it's, a, it is a sight to behold. And it's just an unbelievable, you know, tragedy that this thing never even, basically never got past being launched. And then, bam, straight to the, uh, down to Davy Jones' locker. So, okay, let me do... Uh, 
again, I'm, I'm not sure about pronunciation. This is T-A-R-A-R, Tarar. That's uh, as close as I can get without having any knowledge of the Swedish language. So here we go. There's another tune. <laughs> Fanns en man som inte gick att nå Och deras längtan var som eld och vatten Men det visste de inte då Först var jorden där hans drömmar växte Sen blev hon drömmen om någon annanstans Och hon blev tårar när han slängt han brände Sedan glömde han att hon fanns Det kallas vatten och salt Men man berövas på allt Men den som gråter han vet Det är tårar Men den som inte förstår Kan hälla salt i ett sår Men det är tårar i alla Då hon gick i svarta kläder Och hon blev allt som ingen ville ha Hon gömde sorgen bakom stå och läder Men hon såg på att allt var
fanns en kvinna som var så att lämna It's just different. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, just this vibe and energy and stuff of it's just really unique, and totally, totally love it. Uh, here's one last song. This is called "Oh Mama," and <coughs> I'm assuming that's right because it's spelled "Oh Mama." So I'm gonna anticipate that that's the right pronunciation. But um, here we go. Pi Bachman. <laughs> harmonica on this. Så höll jag dig För enda i 
in i döden fick du slås Vi har skrattat ibland Vi har gråtit oss i land Och ett hav som varit alldeles för stort Åh mamma, livet går så So that's Pi Bachman from Sweden, and the album is P20Y10. <laughs> As I sat there deciphering this, this code. Um, I've been talking to some friends in, in Sweden, been staying in touch with them, and they are uh, quite uh, distressed over their proximity to Russia and, some, and the things that are going on, and, and they're contributing all they can to the effort of the uh, Ukrainian people. This is a, today was such a grotesque nightmare to wake up and see that there was a packed train station of people trying to escape Ukraine and the Russians bombed it, killed a lot of people, a lot of women, children. This is, this is not warfare, this is genocide. And really plain and simple. Uh, they are trying to wipe these people off the face of the earth. Uh, what's going to be if they suddenly are occupying Ukraine? What's left for them? They've destroyed the, the country, basically. And the, 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 these acts are acts of, of the most grotesque monsters um, possible. This is, there's, n there's no real warfare involved in this. There's no philosophy or understanding or reason behind this. This is, this is strictly just monsters killing out there and uh, I, I hope at some point there's a, a, a tribunal uh, like a Nuremberg trial that could take these people out and at the end of the day just hang them be done with them they're just it's unreal the uh, the horrors being inflicted on and getting worse on a daily basis on these poor people and the uh, Russian people are being fed such a pile of shit in their end of things that they're thinking Putin's doing all the right thing. It's the West that's caused this and all of the bodies that are being shown on the news and stuff are all fake and it's all staged. It's like, what does it take? You know, what does it take? You know, and it's real easy when you see people following somebody like this guy, how, how easy it was for people like Hitler to exist. You know, they'll just, they'll just eat it all up. You know, we've had our own issues in this country. Um, it's just when people don't question, they don't, they just blindly follow. They're suddenly in Jonestown going, can I have some more Kool-Aid, please? Um, and um, numbers are going back up with COVID. You know, I just wish people, you know, would realize this isn't over. You know, I, I go out every day and I see people out there acting exactly like they did before COVID. And you start talking, there's a bunch of players in L.A. that um, just don't believe in vaccinations and it's costing all of them their careers. Um, you know, there's all these gigs that they've been doing for a long time. Suddenly they're not on them anymore because of this attitude. So I don't know. I don't know. You know, I just want to enjoy music. I want to hit the road and entertain people and try to bring some pleasure and happiness for a few hours a night to people and keep uh, keep this up um, but it's boy it's heartbreaking every day just to see the other the flip side of the coin of what's going on um, and okay I'm looking forward to tomorrow tomorrow's my one-on-ones with my clubhouse members uh, I'm really excited about that I enjoy that so much every every month uh, I, I really uh, enjoy catching up you know, we've, we've, we've all kind of created a relationship now and 
we, our conversations kind of pick up where they left off. It's, it's pretty cool. I've never anticipated something like this coming down in my, in my um, life and career, and it's turned out to be an, an added bonus uh, at this point. So thank you all for participating in it. I had to always have to bring these things down. I love doing the music and stuff, but boy, the reality of the world we're living in is so tough, so hard. You know, and you just you don't want to you don't want to bury your head in the sand and pretend it's not going on because it is, and we're all being affected by it. And uh, so, uh, take good care. My heart's with everybody out there, and um, I'll try to slip something in tomorrow, depending on my schedule uh, with the one-on-ones. So we'll we'll see. I'm going to go out now before it's totally roasting, and I am going to water all my roses, you know, so they don't wilt out today. It's tough on them, so that's for sure. So I will see you tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye.